Back at it again. Back at it again. Today we're gonna talk about fear. It's something that I cannot stand is fear. All right. We're gonna talk about fear because we all know that even though we should be fearing God, we should not be fearing anything else. Okay, we know the fear of the Lord is love, it's obedience, and they'll save us. But God nor Christ wants us fearing anything else in this life because he got us, all right? He has us. And I don't want any of you out there fearing anything. I want you to be able to put yourself in position to where God has your back and that you have God's love and he loves you as adopted children and not just as his creation. I want you to have the love in you. And so I don't want anyone fearing anything. You got to be courageous to serve the Lord. You can't be afraid to do what's right. Okay? You can't be ashamed to be a Christian and to be in opposition of this world. You can't be afraid to, to, to show it in your example and at times speaking out against it and telling the whole truth and having people manipulate you, deceive you, run con games on you, thinking that you're mean or that you're the bad guy because you, with love, speaks the truth, okay? Those who are against God and his word and his righteousness and his will, they're always going to make those who are for God and his will and his righteousness and his love out to be the bad guys from their POV, because what they're doing is good. They're doing the right thing, and what you're doing is wrong because you're in opposition to their lifestyle, okay? And just navigating through life. Like the last video, we talked about, you know, worrying, and it goes hand in hand at times with fear. And we're gonna kick into some verses and some passages into the Word of God. And Proverbs 29, 25 says, the fear of man brings a snare but whoever puts his trust in the Lord will be safe. Okay? And it can. You can make some bad decision out of fear. If worry and fear, fear of losing someone. Uh, maybe you uh, you know, maybe you make a decision, a bad decision, because you're af afraid of losing someone out of your life. Not to death, but then walking out. So you do some things. Let's say, uh, like I said, let's say you got somebody, maybe you're with the wrong person. And maybe the things they're into, you know, that's important to them in a relationship is money and a whole bunch of other superficial things. And maybe you don't have that much um, at the time. Maybe you're paying bills, maybe for whatever reason. And afraid of losing them, you go out and get money in ways you shouldn't be getting money. Or you're, or you're maybe, you know, maybe you're a person who, who thinks too much about how the world thinks of you. And you go out here and, you know, you feel like you have to look away, drive a certain type of vehicle and dress a certain way. And the fear of people not um, accepting you for how you are and who you are and for who you are on the inside um, causes you to go make decisions to get money in ways. Some people could sell drugs, some people could strip and all kind of other ridiculous ways, uh, doing all kind of fraudulent things to obtain money. And, and there's a lot of things, you know, that's just one example of it. Uh, there's other things, all kind of other ways that fear, you know, fear of losing your job. So maybe you stab someone in the back at work. Uh, maybe you get them fired. You deceive, you know, the company and, and make somebody else out because you're afraid that you're going to lose your job. Um, you know, it can turn that hard to do some evil, wicked things. Um, and a whole bunch of other things, you know, uh, a plea of examples. Those are some off the top of my head um, that people deal with every day, though. The things I see, um, you know, so don't have that fear. Especially Christians should definitely not have fear. You know, 2 Timothy 1 7 tells us that for God has not give, given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and self control. Okay, so we don't get that spirit of fear, all right? And I, and then and then John's gonna say some about that. He says, you know, in First John four, uh, sixteen to eighteen, it says, and we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in Him. In this way, God's love is perfected in us, so that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Boldness on the day of judgment. Okay, 
you supposed to have boldness on the day of judgment. A lot of people that tell you, man, you ain't supposed to be, you, you don't, you can't be, you know, you need to humble. If you ain't sinning, or you know that you trying to live righteous. Now they call you arrogant, I guess, for that. But you supposed to have boldness, and you supposed to know that you ain't sinning. You supposed to know that God is gonna accept you. Keep going, keep on going though, because as He is, so are we in this world. As He is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Get that? There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. Whoever fears, whoever fears is not perfect in love. So we have to understand that and we have to acknowledge that and accept that. And we have to believe what's said and we have to get that fear up out of us, okay? If you got, and that's true. You never, I mean, think about kids and people as kids. You don't really fear, you know, when you come home, what kid is afraid to come home to his parents and see on this something he expecting of? A good leather belt or a switch or something like that, um, or you expecting to be having the or in today's time in Generation Z, um, you know they expecting their phones or something, video games taken away from them or whatever. So, um, you know the same thing. If you waking up fearful, you know why? What are you doing that that you ain't supposed to be doing? Um, knowing that we have the promise of the Lord, uh, we have the promise of salvation as long as we stay faithful unto death. If we're staying faithful, we have that promise. So what is there to fear? What is there to fear? Because we have the promise of salvation that we know in the day of judgment, like it says, we can boldly, we have boldness and we we'll know we'll be saved. Okay. So what is there to fear? You know, if you're in a relationship or you're in a marriage, you know, what is it to fear that you're doing something you're supposed to be doing? Okay. Um, so, and like I said, perfect love casts out fear. All right. And if some of some of and I talk a lot about relationships, because if you got social media, that that topic rules social media. All through the day, you see people posting about, you know, issues and relationships like that is the number one outside of politics and all this stuff for entertainment. Most people are it's the relationship thing. That's that's what you mostly see. Uh, this, this is um, and even in pop culture, you see, you know, who's dating, who's shipping to be dated, and who's divorced and all that stuff. But uh, so I'll even go as far as saying, you know, if you're not unmarried and you, you know, you're dating somebody, you know, you, you got worries and your gut is telling you some things, you know, you might want to get out of that situation because you should be, you know, comfortable. And I'm not talking about shacking up, you know, y'all, you need to get married or, or, or get going on that, split apart, live separate until you do get married. But, you know, just regular dating, you're not, you know, different homes, you're not fornicating. Um, some of you probably shacking up doing it. You need to get out of that, too. You know, you're, you're in fear because, first of all, you don't have the Lord. You're shacking up. Some of you guys are getting together and both of you were very easy for each other to be able to, you know, fornicate with. And you know that. And now you're afraid that they're, you know, you got that spirit of jealousy now because you know they're easy for you. <laughs> You are easy for them, and now y'all worried that the next person gonna be easy. You know, get up, get on out of that situation. Period, man. And get, get right, and get a get a right situation. Go about the right way. You know, get to know somebody. All right, back on the topic of fear of the way I wanted to uh, talk about it. Um, you know, again, lo the love of the Lord is opposite of fear. Okay, we're gonna go into Psalms thirty-four. Uh, Psalm of David says, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about David. Look what David says. He says, "I will bless the Lord at all times." His praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul will make it boast, make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Okay. I just want to, I'm just going to read. You don't even, this, this, this stuff is self-explanatory. Let's go over to Joshua. This is Joshua, right? This is God talking to Joshua at the most time after Moses died. And it said, this is what he tells, he says, be strong and courageous for you shall provide the land that I swore for you shall provide the land that I swore to their fathers to give them as an inheritance to for his people. Be strong and be and be strong and very courageous in order to act carefully in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn aside from it to the right or to the left so that you may succeed wherever you go. The book, this book of the law must not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may act carefully 
according to all that is written in. And see, God's telling you, like I told y'all a couple years ago, we get the spirit of self-control. We ain't supposed to go on sinning. God's telling you how not to sin. <laughs> he's telling you. How, how, he's telling them. He's telling them how they cannot sin. All right? Meditate on it day and night. For then you will make your way successful. Now, this is from him. And he ain't lying. And you will be wise. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I'm going to tell you, for Christians today, the Lord is still with you. We know that. God is with us. He gives us our Holy Spirit. He gives us his spirit. The Holy Spirit, we have that with us. And he is with us. Okay? He is with us. There is nothing to fear. If we die, we know that the scriptures say that every man has an appointed day. And we know that when we pass from this world, we know what's expected of us. We know salvation. We know paradise first into judgment day. Then we know we go on where we go out to judgment day. Okay? So there's nothing to fear. We know this world's temporary. We know this money is going to fade. We know the job. We're going to get old. We know all these things is coming. And we know this is temporary life, like I said. We're going to go on to the eternal life where it's way better when none of those things happen. So where is it a fear? Okay, Psalms 56, again, let's go right back into it. All right, it says, Be gracious to me, O God, for man would crush me. For man would crush me all day long. He who battles oppresses me. All day long, my enemies will crush me. For there are many who arrogantly battle against me. And a day when I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I have trusted, I would not fear what mere flesh can do to me. What can mere flesh do to me? What can flesh do to you against the power of God that got your back that's with you? What can man do against you when you got the power of God having your back, all right, who's with you? What can anything do? What can man do? Even we go, even like Stephen on that, look, Hebrews 13 says, let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unknowingly. Remember those who are in chains as if in prison with them. Remember that was in chains, like, like you were in prison with them. That's the, that's the mindset we got to have. We can't forget our brothers and sisters in Christ. And those who are ill-treated, since you are also in the body. The body is what? The church. Marriage is to be honored among everyone, and the bed undefiled. But God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterers. Let your lives be without love of money and be content with the things you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Okay. So we have, as you can see in this, the text, that's Hebrews 13, starting at verse 13. We have no reason to fear. If we are fearing, that's because we ain't doing something right. We're not living right. Okay. Or we haven't been taught right. Or we know we're not in Christ. So we need to get out of that having fear, okay? We have to get out of it. Now, I'm not talking about phobias like, you know, I mean, if you see a rattlesnake, you you ought to run, okay? <laughs> if you see a rock rider down the street, you ought to go another way. That does not mean I'm, I'm that, that's tempting the Lord then. Something, this is, so you have to use your brain. Some things, you know, is meant for you to be afraid of, right, okay? You're not going to jump out of a plane without an air parachute and say, oh, I know the God's with me. I won't die. That's, no, you're going to die. Okay. Um, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about as you go out through life, you know, as you navigate, you shouldn't be afraid uh, of anything, um, especially something that you can't control. Um, you shouldn't be afraid to do God's will. You shouldn't be afraid to live up to the expectation that is expected of you by the Lord. Okay. You shouldn't you shouldn't fear that and you shouldn't fear men or anything like that. OK, you know, you should be you should be bold, you know, and you shouldn't have no fear when it comes to doing the will of God, period. No fear in that at all. OK, no fear in living, no fear of getting up, you know, no worrying about things. You're going to be all right. OK, you know, so. That's what we're talking about. There's phobias people have. You don't like those. That's totally different. But nothing should stop you from doing God's will. Now, I'm going to tell you, though, hey, <laughs> now, if there's a sister or brother in Christ who can't walk and, they, and there's something about to get them, you got to be courageous. You got to rescue them. 
You got to, you know. That's a whole different thing, but you know, and you gotta you gotta show that love. And then love is no fear. Love and uh, if you got kids or anything, if you seen your kid outside with a whole bunch of I don't know a mother or daddy or father on this planet, they seen their child, maybe it's a dog coming, they going and they scared of them pit bulls, I bet you they won't be scared to put bulls that day. You know, so you know, um we're not meant to be fearing, you know, and that's just all about it. Um Matthew 10, 26, 31, it says, uh, you know, when it's talking about, uh, this is Jesus talking, he says, uh, therefore, this is verse 26, uh, therefore do not fear them for knowing, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in darkness, speak in the light, okay? And what you hear in the air, preach out the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground without your father, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Therefore do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. And that's just it. So don't be, don't be afraid um, when you navigate through this world to do right. Don't be afraid what's going to happen if you do right. Don't be afraid of like I said, don't be afraid if you ain't got this or that. How people going to think about you. Don't care how people going to think about you. Do not care about how people going to think about you, please. Okay? If you live for the cheers, you will die by the booze. Don't don't worry about all that. Okay? Just do what's right. Live, Do God's will. Live righteous. Live truthfully righteous. And everything. God's going to work everything out. As long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, he's going to be there right with you. Working it all out. Um... You know, Romans 21, 18, it speaks of this. It says, uh, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the, the abominable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars shall have their portion in a lake which burns, burns with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. First thing it says, the first thing in name is the cowardly or the fearful in the original King James. So, you know, this is this is something. And it says to have their <laughs> portion in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone. This is second in death. So to be quite frank, you don't make it to paradise. You don't, and then on the day of judgment, you don't make it to heaven, being cowardly. Okay, so you gotta. There's no fear, but fear has to do with punishment. Fear has to do with punishment. Again, if we're afraid of something, if we have some kind of fear, then something's wrong. Now we should fear the Lord. We should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We should fear Him. Okay, you have to understand that's different type of fear. A phobia is different. Then the fear is spoken of this, but we should have no fear as we navigate through life. Um, you know, especially doing what's right and doing his will. Don't care what the world says. That's right. Culture does not dictate what's right. The scriptures are not going to change because of culture or people. Okay? This is not going to happen. Um, you know, here's a here's a good example. Mark 5 right here. Um, this is dealing with Jesus says, and while he was still speaking, some came from the house of the synagogue of the house of the synagogue ruler and said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid. Only believe. Do not be afraid. Only believe. That's all you got to do. He let no one follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. He came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw the, and those who rep, and saw the tumult and those who rep loudly, wail loudly. When he came in, he said to them, why does this uproar, why make this uproar and reek? The girl's not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him in ridicule. When he had put them all out, <laughs> put them all out. He took the father and the mother of the girl and those who were with him and entered where the girl was lying. He took the girl by the hand and said to her, uh, I think it's to let the kumai, something I cannot pronounce, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately, the girl rose and walked for she was 12 years of age and they were greatly astonished. He strictly ordered them to let no one know of it and directed them to give her something to eat. So he told him, man, don't be afraid, don't believe, and a miracle was done, okay? And that's my time uh, for the day on that. We had 19 minutes, maybe 20 minute mark. I told y'all these would be short. I, I'm still passing 15 minutes, so we're going to still work on that. But it's hard 
to make it short when you're talking about the word of God, when you, you know, when you really trying to get a good message out for folks and you want to, you want to help folks, right? You want to help them. So, um, I hope that motivates you all from fear of, if you're not in the Lord, like I've always say, you know, you can be in the Lord. Leave me a comment. I'll find you a church of Christ where you're at. You know, um, you know, it tells us Acts 38, got to repent, be baptized, repent, meaning turn away from sins. You must be baptized by a member of the church of Christ, a male member of the church of Christ.